Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to make data packs in Minecraft Java Edition. My name is CodeZealot and today we're going to be looking at part two of this series of Minecraft Java development. If you haven't yet seen the first video, make sure you go and watch that and download the template that I've provided for this data pack in the description of that video. Okay, let's jump right back in where we were last time and not waste any time here. We're going to go right back into Sublime Text and what we're going to be doing in today's video is setting up the reload.mc function file that we were preparing for last time. So if we head over here now to load.json, what we're going to see is the function we'll be creating today. This is a function call inside of load.json. And what this does is essentially load.json is run every single time we do the slash reload command in Minecraft. And what we have here is an array. These two brackets here are an array. If you don't know what that is, don't worry. You don't really need to know if you're just following this as a tutorial. But if you want a little extra info, this is what this is. It's an array. And this is just one of the elements in the array, which is going to be just one function. And so we're only calling one function. And the reason for this is, as I mentioned before, you could list a bunch of things inside of this load.json file, but I just find that to be too messy. I like to have everything in one location inside of my data pack, and I like to have a reload.mc function file. So let's go ahead and create that now. What we need to do is go over to our cztut namespace or whatever you named your namespace and go into your functions directory. Now, once we're here, I'm just going to right click and add a new file. And this is how I do it in Sublime Text. If you're using something else, just go ahead and add a file right next to main.mc function. And we're going to name it reload.mc function. So let's go ahead and do that now. So reload.mc function, save it. And we now have our reload.mc function file. So let's just go ahead and throw another say command in here. Let's just say reload, save it, and let's see it in action. So if we go into our Minecraft world where we have the data pack installed and we go ahead and reload, we'll see that we're reloading the data pack. And it was there for just a split second before it got uh, pushed away. You can see server reload. And then now we're just spamming the we did it message from main.mc function. So we now know our reload function is working. And so what would you use a reload function for? Well, it really depends on what you're trying to create. But essentially, I have something already set up to show you guys. I'm going to show you how to put another watermark in your data pack that is a lot more useful. So what we're going to do is go back over here. We're going to erase this because we're not going to have this command. And we're going to use what I already have prepared. Now, if you don't know any of this code, don't worry about it. You can go look at a tutorial on my channel. Hopefully I have one out right now about the tell raw command and you can learn all about tell raw. If not, go ahead and leave a comment down below and tell me to make one so I can go ahead and get that one to the long list of Minecraft command tutorials that I have building up on this channel. So what we're going to do is copy this and we're going to paste it right into our reload.mc function file. And what this does is essentially we're going to be outputting a bunch of just blank lines to clear the chat. And then we have our watermark right here. So let's go see this in action now. We go back into Minecraft. We type out reload. Oh, you know what I'm going to do first? Actually, I'm going to disable this spam message from main. And uh, that'll make this a lot easier. So let's go ahead and just comment this out. We'll just put a hashtag or a pound there. And we'll talk about comments at the end of this video. Go back into the Minecraft world and reload. And now the main.mc function file is no longer spamming the chat and we see our new watermark. Now what this has in it is some tell raw commands. And one of the cool things you can do with tell raw on your data packs is you can make functional links. And so if you click on any of these, they will actually work. This takes you to my website, codezilla.com, where I'm soon going to have a command school. So make sure you're following along there. And also I have all kinds of news about the RPG MMO server that I'm putting together with a team of developers called Panea. And it's getting pretty, uh, pretty close to being at beta release. So if you don't know about that, go ahead and check out the other videos I have on RPG stuff and you'll get caught up to speed pretty quick. Next, also, I have a link uh, down here to, that goes to my channel and one that will let you join my Discord server. So this is a pretty useful reload function. When someone downloads your data pack and they reload it on their world, they're prompted with this opportunity to interact with these links. So. That's just one example of a reload.mc function that you could use in a data pack. And so to wrap up this video, let's go ahead now and just talk very briefly here about comments and how they can be used in our Minecraft function files. So if we go back to Sublime Text, we can talk about what's going on right here and how it's working. So inside of a Minecraft.mc function file, inside of this text file with this extension for an MC function, 
we are able to write what is called a comment. And this is just like in any other programming language. Basically, what this is is a way to write a message to ourself or to someone else, maybe another developer who may be looking at our code, or maybe just something you know, like a to-do list we got to do inside this file to keep ourselves uh, uh, focused on what we're trying to do here. And people use them in all different ways. Essentially, the only thing you need to know about comments is how to use them in terms of how to actually write one, and then also how they should be used. Because a comment is a very powerful tool that can help you in your development, but it's also a very dangerous one. Because if you don't keep your comments up to date and they start lingering in your code, they can really throw you off and confuse you. And especially another developer who's not familiar with your code and trying to learn it will be very confused if you have comments that are not up to date. So let's go ahead and just write a comment here to practice. We're gonna write a comment that actually matters. So Let's go over to the reload.mc function file. And at the top of this file, we can go ahead and just copy our watermark over if we want to do that. So we can just copy and we're going to paste it right here in the top of the file for reload.mc function. And now we're just going to write a little comment that says what this file does. So this is the, uh, the function for our server's reloads. It is called in, uh, what is it, load json and so here is an example of a comment that's useful it has some information about where this function is being called from and it's describing what it does and so this is an example of an okay you know a, a good comment now what if we change this and we got rid of this uh this message in here and uh we change the code. Well, this comment's still fine because it's still being called from load.json and this is still the same thing right here. But if we had something else in here uh, that said something that, you know, this displays a watermark, I'm not gonna type it out, but essentially if we change this comment and we said this displays the watermark for our data pack, but then we change this and it no longer displayed a watermark, but we left the comment behind, that would be the example of a bad comment. So as we're going through this series, make sure that if you write comments to yourself or to another developer perhaps that you make sure they're up to date and you remove them when they're no longer necessary. All right, guys, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can get the notification when video three is out in this series on Minecraft Java development. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.